Yes, family, we're at George Padmore Library and we're about to check out the collection and all of the historical connection mm. of this library. Mm. We got the two famous pictures of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Hello, you're welcome to Dutch Padmore Library uh, for Research for Pan African Affairs. And I have with me Mr. Sintero, is the co-author of the library. He's going to talk to you more about Dutch Padmore and this connection to the Pan African and to Ghana, why his ashes were brought back to Ghana and why we have his library right here in the midst of the rich area of Accra. Okay. All right, thank you, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. My name is, as he said, my name is Simonte. I'm the head of the Padmore Library here. Um, basically, the Dutch Padmore Research Library on African Affairs has been established by Dr. Kwame after the death of Dutch Padmore. So, the man Dutch Padmore, his real name wasn't Dutch Padmore, so he was called Malcolm Meredith Pippanless. So he traveled to the United States of America in 1924 to study medicine. Then in 1927, he decided to join the Communist Party, um, which were interested in fighting for African freedom. So in a way of doing that, he met Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, and they realized they had the same ideology, so they started fighting together. They believed that the war or the fight against slavery shouldn't be by physical um, weapons like guns and cutlasses and crew. They believe that they should use pen and paper or uh, organizing of conferences to ensure that Africa is free from this um, slavery. So they were organizing conferences together until Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was invited by the leadership of the UGCC to become the general secretary of the party. So upon the first invitation, he decided not to come, but Padmore advised him to come and accept the position by telling him that if we must win the fight against slavery on the African continent, then it is advisable for us to start from home. So it was that little advice that changed Dr. Nkrumah's mind to become the secretary of the UGCC. So he came to the Gold Coast and became the um, secretary of the party. Two years later, in 1927, he decided to form his own party, the CPP, which finally led Ghana to its independence in 1927. So immediately after the independence in 1957, he decided to um, invite Judge Padmore to become his personal advisor on African affairs. And for somebody to invite another person to become his personal advisor means even Dr. Nkuma acknowledged the fact that Judge Padmore was his senior man. Yes, so he became the advisor for only two years. That was between 1957 to 1959. And God's sake, so he was taken back to London and he died in September 1959 at age 56. So immediately after the death of Padmore, Dr. Nkuma decided to establish this library to become a center for research, especially in the area of Pan-Africanism, where every student across the world can get statistical and factual data on Pan-Africanism and the issue of slavery in the African continent. So the first document that was brought to this library were the documents from the um, um, Padmore's personal office, the Bureau of African Affairs. That was this period between 1957 to 1966, where Dr. Kwame Kuma was the president of this country. So we have all the files which are made up of personal handwritten documents, or some of them are typed um, files belonging to Dr. Kwame Kuma and Judge Padmore in our possession here. So the library is having three major sections. We have the first ever library to be established, the Ghana Collection Department. 
which houses every material on Ghana. So if you are looking for the brew of African affairs materials or the history books on um, Ghana, books on Pan-Africanism and the rest, we have all of them at the Ghana Collection Department. All the daily newspapers from 1955 to date are also housed there. In Kuma's personal collection, everything is kept at the Ghana Collection Department. And here we have the Africa Collection Department that houses books on all the African countries. So if you go, you see books under each country arranged in a particular order. We use the Dewey Desma Classification Scheme in organizing our collection. Then the final one is the administrative block where various administrative functions take place. So looking at this small, um, we have Padmore's album. Um, these pictures consist of pictures of his funeral. If you look at it, you realize that when the body has been conveyed to, uh, I mean, from the church, then we also have the picture of when the ashes were brought to Ghana by a lady called Dorothy Pisa. Dorothy Pisa was the partner's personal secretary. So we have all these pictures here. So basically, if you want to know about Judge Padmore, the relationship between Judge Padmore and Dr. Kami Kuma, why the Padmore Library, this is basically the history behind the Padmore Library. So you are once again welcome to the Padmore Library. Mm -hmm. And I will take the tour from here, the Africa Collection Department. We will go to the Ghana Collection Department and finally at the tomb. So when the ashes were brought first, they were entered at the Christenburg Castle. But in 1992, Jerry John Rollins decided to bring the ashes to us at the Padmore Library here. So every year in August, we have what we call the Emancipation Day celebration, which starts from the Boys Centre, the Padmore Library, and ends at the Padmore Museum. So we light out the flames of emancipation at the end of every year, in August, every year. So I'll take you through and we'll end the tour at the, at the graveyard. I want to again uh, thank uh, you. Are once again, welcome to the Padmore Library, and we um, will be looking forward to um, see you once again. Maybe you continue to visit us, and we are ready to also make sure you get the information you want. Thank you very much. So, if you have any questions you want to ask about Padmore, Padmore Library, you are free to do so.